When I was 18, I'm 29 now, I died and I went to heaven. This isn't going to be your average near-death experience tale, or better to say story, because yes, I did see the light, I was engulfed by it, and I'm just going to tell you, long story short, after a lot of greetings by other souls, very loving souls by God himself, who is not just a man energy, but he's female. He's both. That's why there's a balance of both. Is there a God? No. There happened to be a guy that showed up out of the blue who turned out to be a relative that we didn't know was a relative of ours. And he was a doctor. I don't, I don't know what else to say except this, if it wasn't for this guy showing up at that time at my grandma's house and for him to talk to me on the phone after she left, to tell me to call the ambulance, I don't think I'd be here today. I still, I still really feel like he was my angel in a lot of ways because if it wasn't for him, I would have died right in that house. I know I would have. Last night I was on the phone with somebody named Dustin, he's a good friend of mine, and he's literally an angel on earth, he's been there for me, and I'm so grateful, so grateful for everything with him. And I tried to shut the door behind me, I literally had to look behind me first because I knew it was, it was right on my back. And when you get that feeling, you don't even have to be medium to know. You'll know when something's literally attached to you, and you will feel intense uh, invasion of space to the point where it will make you jump or scream because of how intense it can be with certain entities, especially depending on the kind of entity and its experience and its velocity and intention. And so then suddenly I knew it was up to something, and I knew something wasn't going well. I was on the phone with Dustin, thank God I was on the phone with him, because I don't know how I would have been if this happened by myself with no one to talk to. And then suddenly, as I'm going up the second set of stairs, I barely went up three steps, and something told me to stop, and as I was just about to lean against the railing on the left side of the stairwell, I didn't touch it yet. I was paused. And something told me something was going to happen, and I was still holding the railing behind me. And then suddenly I felt, on my right side, this thing next to me. I could feel it. It was still there. It was like, stop, no jumping. It was like, right there. And the next thing I know, I feel, on my ass, something go against my backside and like grope my ass like just whoosh and and it was a very hard rub and it really bothered me because I knew I wasn't leaning against the railing and it even actually kind of pushed me a little bit I was with one of my other very special guys but more importantly, he's like um, a spiritual spouse in many ways. His name is Hunter. Uh, yes, that is his name. I discovered his name. I kept thinking his name was Michael, like Archangel Michael, but his name is Hunter. I can't tell you how amazingly grateful I am for Hunter because if it wasn't for him, I'd probably be dead in many cases. 
What happened was I, I went to sleep, woke up in astral projection, my soul walked out of my body, my astral body, and I walked to the hall here, and then I meet with my twin flame who died in 2012. He tells me, and I could hear him along with God. I heard God, I heard Source. They said, and there was other angels, and there was even like fairies like flying around, like these butterfly fairies, and they were really, really cool. Then God said, you are going to get sick. And here's the thing, my tarot cards have been saying the same, but I didn't, I haven't told you guys. I, I'm gonna go get tested. Breast cancer runs in my family. I remember though, this absolute fear of, oh my God, does that mean I'm gonna die? Friday night, I went out, I had four drinks. I had, a, I had a blast, it was fine, everything was fine. I played pool, everything was safe. I met up with a guy that I haven't seen in over a year. We had fun, everything was good. He's another guy that won't fucking take the word no, but I'll move on from that too. But the thing is, is either way, it was still a good night. Everything was fine. I mean, he wasn't inappropriate or any shit like that. I'm not gonna give him any more air than he needs. But the fact is, he was too touchy. He doesn't fucking understand the word no. Stop touching me, stop kissing me. Anyway, what happened though is that we went to his place and he just lives like t literally t a minute and a half, two minutes away from me. And I went outside, he passed out in his room, and I went outside, we didn't do any, no hanky-panky, we didn't do anything, okay, we were just chilling. And then I went outside to try to find his address, because I couldn't find his mail or anything, I wanted to know where, and I'm too nice to fucking wake him up, and I was trying to find his address of where he lived so I could call a cab and go home. And I standing outside, and the next thing I know, I feel really weird. It wasn't just because of the alcohol. I felt like there is something standing fucking next to me, and I'm outside. No one else is outside with me. And I look over, and I went, there are some people standing right here. I'm standing there, and I'm like, okay, there's somebody fucking here. I'm going to go inside, though. As I turn around, kid you not, all of a sudden, I feel a push, and it pushed me really fucking hard and I landed hard on the stairs there's two there was only two small stairs but I landed just right on the edge of that top fucking stair that's made out of concrete and I fell right on my chest on my neck from here all the way down and I lost air and I passed out I passed out I completely collapsed I lost air I couldn't breathe I went <gasps> and all of a sudden my soul jumped out of my body again I was pushed. I didn't just fall. I was fucking pushed. I thought at first that I slipped because there's a lot of ice. Then I remembered that I felt this force on my back and it pushed me and I landed on there. The thing is, is right as my soul like jumped out of my body, I actually projected and boom, there's standing fucking right there outside of this dude's house. I'm standing outside and then my other guardian, he's standing right there. There's there's this other dude. And they basically told me that I had two options. And I said, what are you talking about? They said, Melinda, that was a demon that just pushed you into the stair and you almost just cracked your neck and you almost just died. Yep, I nearly died on my birthday. The day before my birthday. Again. I said, so you're just telling me I just had another fucking near-death experience? They said, yeah, pretty much. I'm not going on my trip to North Carolina and there's a reason. And I'm really mad about it. And I'm pissed off because it just makes me look more this crazy. This video is for It just makes Steve me look more Harvey. stupid. And no matter how hard I try to be happy or to do anything that makes me feel alive in this fucking world, gets shit on. I had to cancel my flight. I live in Alaska and I was supposed to go to Seattle, to Georgia, to Washington. So don't read my private information, but this was my itinerary. These were my reservations. These were the planes. These were the departure dates. These were uh, my return dates. Okay, July, July 13th, Friday the 13th. I was supposed to fly out, and then I was supposed to come back on August 11th. Okay, I've made so many trips all over. Not like all over the fucking world, but I've made plenty of trips. I've gone to all sorts of trips. But the only time they ever come to me and intervene in my life is when it's serious. And every single time when they have intervened in my life and told me what was going to happen, 
or what to be warned of has always come true. Every single time. And it's always bad news. It's never good news. But Jesus came to me in a dream recently and he told me that I can't get on my plane. And I went, why? Are you serious right now? This is the only time I get to have a fucking vacation in 20 years. Why? And I'm mad about that, but I'm, I'm even more mad based on the information he told me because I feel helpless, because I feel guilty, and I'm, there's so many emotions, you have no idea. And he told me the reason why I can't get on my plane is because me and Jocelyn will die. Well, you guys, I had premonitions of me being murdered a few years ago, and I've been told by my guide several times there is a possibility I won't reach the age of 40. That scares the hell out of me. When I try to see the vision of my life, I can't go that far. Every single time when I try to see the premonition of my life, there is a possibility, there is a window of a possibility that I'll survive, that I'll be able to live a normal life. But in other, other situations and other cases, there is still a high probability that I won't reach the age of 40. I see him out in the, sitting in front of the front door. The door is locked. And he was sitting in front of the door. He had his chair up against the front door to block me from the door. He was sitting in pitch darkness. He had a beer next to his feet in his hand. And then he also had his shotgun sitting in his lap. He always carries his shotgun loaded. He always leaves them loaded. He never unloads them, which is fucking stupid. And the first thing that went in my mind when I saw this immediately was news cover story, mom, daughter dead, boyfriend suicide. You know, murder, suicide, mother, daughter, boyfriend. That's what was going in my head at that point. And I knew at that point, at that moment, I knew I really got to be careful of what I say and what I do in the next few minutes. The next morning I woke up and I found that he was gone. I guess he went to work that day. The moment I knew he was gone, I called my dad immediately and I told him what the fuck happened. He immediately came over, he got off work, and because he can do that at his job because it's pretty high up there. And he made sure that I was able to get everything and we literally moved out. I didn't have that many belongings, so I moved out that, that day. And I made sure I left before he got back. I made sure everything was gone. I left my house key. I did not make sure, I, I never went back. I mean, I'm not gonna lie. In the experience, I was terrified for my life. And I was afraid for many hours throughout that night, wondering the what if scenario of, what if he's gonna shoot me and Jocelyn dead and then suddenly he's gonna kill himself. Because what if he drinks enough beers and he gets emotional and erratic and he does something irresponsible or crazy? I was thinking about all these scenarios in my head. I was terrified. I mean, it took a long time for me to even be alright to be alone with people. Uh, it took me a long time to not be so triggered when I see guns. It took me a long while to heal. So again, I've had a lot of really bad experiences. That's not even one of the worst ones. I already knew the risks of jumping into this when I started. I was already very well aware. I had already got many uh, red flags, like warnings, like threats from demonic entities. And I already knew that the moment I did this book, it would be a threat not just to my life, but to my very sanity. And because that's what they do, they are psychological attackers. They, they definitely do terrible things to people as much as possible to try to get you to believe you're even insane, to try to get you to believe, I'm having a deja vu right now, to believe in all these negative things about yourself. 
so that way you can second guess your own sanity so that way in hopes that maybe you will stop trying to stop them or trying to do what I'm trying to do which is write this book but the, to get to the point I had this dream uh, and when I say dream it wasn't just a dream I was in a different dimension I was with we were together and I happened to be sitting on top of him in a moment after we had made love and that was that moment that you probably had saw about the twin flame concept that wasn't shared before uh, that's not taught or told by other people and that was my twin flame experience and but the thing is is we were still in that chapel